I've been patiently waiting for Samsung to send over a Galaxy Z Fold 2. And I'm still waiting for Samsung to send a Galaxy Z Fold 2, but that's okay, because our bros over at dbrand sent one over, and I am extremely excited to check this thing out. I was a big fan of the original Fold, with my main three complaints being, one, that the hinge did not hold up for me. So I opened mine up, and I don't know if you can tell very easily, but it's really noticeable in the hand. That's not quite 180 degrees open. You gotta, I have to kind of like over crank it in order to get it flat every time I open the device. Number two, the YouTube stories feature in the YouTube app that rolls to this phone doesn't work for whatever reason. I can't upload stories, which as a YouTuber is sort of a problem for me. And number three, the maximum screen brightness is just not enough. Dbrand sent this, which should be fairly obvious should be fairly obvious from the skin on the back of the phone. You know, Dbrand, you guys are gonna have trouble as phones become more and more screen. I, I couldn't help noticing you guys have less and less skin to apply. But hey, at least if your business is gonna disappear, at least you guys are having fun over there. Putting, uh, putting them meme faces on them phones. You can check them out, dbrand.com. I had actually forgotten how much of a problem that was on the original Fold, and it doesn't entirely fix it because most of what they've added is in the chin and the forehead here, but the bezels are smaller, even if this is kind of hidden. Yeah, you can see they're still pretty sizable, but they're quite a bit smaller, which means that you're not feeling quite as cramped. At least you're able to have, you know, four home screen icons abreast here. That's a pretty big difference maker. Ho, 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 that hinge. That is next generation. Oh, I am extremely pleased with that. Now, in defense of the original Fold, mine's a little worn out. This has been fairly heavily used, but you see that, that kind of, that crack and how wobbly that is? You see that? Here's the Z Fold 2. Quite stiff. It actually feels like it, like a tablet in the hand. That is a night and day difference. The other immediately noticeable external difference is that gone is the separate lock and fingerprint sensor buttons. So just like on one of the old Xperia's from back in the day, they've combined the fingerprint sensor and the lock button. Let's have a look at what the performance is like. So, <laughs> oh, Samsung, as much as I love the idea of underscreen fingerprint sensors, your ultrasonic ones just are not as fast as your less ultrasonic ones. That's really responsive. Feels good. Feels really good. 120 hertz display, baby. Love that OLED. Sorry, sorry. Uh, it, uh, after the setup process, when you migrate all your text messages and contacts and apps and all that stuff, it gives you a little summary that says, hey, here's some things we couldn't do. You need to go manually back up your WhatsApp and transfer that over. I thought that was really cool. Not because like I would forget to do that, but if it was my in-laws, it'd be nice to have like a little summary like that of all the maintenance tasks you still need to complete. I wanna compare the maximum screen brightness here because daytime readability was a significant problem for me. That is quite a lot brighter. Okay. Well, this is good. Uh, wait, that one has a blue light filter on. There you go. Well, there's your problem there. But in terms of brightness, that is definitely brighter. And one of the things that bothered me about the old Fold, only sometimes though, was that if you looked at it directly, you couldn't see the crease. But if you went off axis, you see that? You can really see it. So I wanna compare that effect on the new one. Oh, it's still there. It's still there. Turns out you can't put a big crease down the middle of your display and not be able to see it. You see that? It is better. It's definitely better, but it's also definitely still there. The good news is that that is an absolute worst case scenario for it. And in something like video content, you are much, much less likely to notice it. They're programmed to let people with legal copies of Windows 7 or 8 upgrade to Windows 10 for free. Many users have reported the free upgrade pay for a key, the OS will still work just fine. Man, this is a lot of screen real estate. So speakers I would describe as okay. I mean, really, I don't know if there's much they can do about that. This is an extremely slim device and at least they're providing stereo speakers, which I love the configuration because you can hold it on the bottom like this and the speakers are here and here. So they're never gonna be obstructed. You're basically watching a video at the same size as your old iPhone 4. You've got your video description or 
if the app was better optimized, you know, maybe your comments or something down here. Now that's curious. My old fold doesn't actually have that same tablety layout when I'm not in full screen. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what I had really wanted to show you guys though was the gigantic notch. I just wish Samsung had done away with it entirely, but this is way better and way less distracting than this. Let's see if I'm able to upload a story. See, look at that. They are determined for me to not daily drive this device, as far as I can tell. No posts, no stories. All right, most of what Andy's telling me he wants to know about this is more like review territory, you know, battery life, can you daily drive the outside screen? I personally found that with my small hands, small fingers, I was able to do it on the old one. So I'm actually expecting this to be a way better experience. But there is something that I wanna to touch on here on Short Circuit before we do the LTT video. Okay, let's talk about the screen protector. After this message from our sponsor, Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access keeps your internet access. Private, it's a VPN, so it does everything a VPN does. And when it's part of your online security toolbox, it'll help keep your identity private from the websites and services that you're using and even convince them that you're in a different country if you're trying to get around censorship or other reasons for geo-restricting access to content. So go check them out at the link in the video description. I didn't realize how much wider it was. Like it felt, it felt really big in my hands and heavy and stuff, but it is way wider than the original Fold. So anyway, with the original Fold, there was a big hubbub around the supposed pre-installed screen protector that as it turned out was actually just part of the screen. People removed them, it caused a big, big problem. But with the Z Fold 2, there actually is an included screen protector. And I gotta say, just from the very short amount of time that I've spent with it so far, I really don't like it. Now, Samsung apparently has a procedure where they will replace it for you once, but I think the recommendation is to keep it on. The problem is that the feel of the screen as I'm swiping is really sticky. And initially I thought, well, maybe it's just because my fingers are greasy, but it's, there's a lot of resistance there. Like that's the one thing going from gen one to gen two that is immediately noticeably better about the original is that it doesn't have that screen protector on it. So it seems both the front one and the inside one are removable. I just, the problem though, is that guys, this is not Gorilla Glass on the inside. So you can't just, you know, scratch your keys on it and hope for the best. Like this thing will freaking scratch if you remove that screen protector. It feels not very good though, to be honest with you, especially for like, what is this, $2,000 or something US for this thing? like $1,800, something like that. You know what I think the optimal selfie camera configuration would be for this thing? It's actually no selfie camera. Like, why don't you just hold it like this and just see yourself in the preview up here and just take your picture with your rear shooter. Like the more you can use your best lens on the device, the better in my opinion. Although if they do have to have a selfie camera here, I'm relatively okay with that. I just wish that there wasn't one Ah, oh, see, yeah, Chrome, Chrome hides it, but let's find, uh, let's find something that doesn't hide it. Yeah, yuck. Man, it is such a different experience. I don't even have to like click a picture to see, like, it's awesome. Yeah, the camera bump's higher than last time, Andy, but uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe the rear camera is also better than last time. I haven't obviously spent any time with it yet, but so far on paper, I'm really excited to check this thing out though. It addresses my biggest complaints about the original Galaxy Fold and it even just, it just feels better. Like listen, listen to this sound. Whereas mm. listen to this one. Okay, that doesn't sound much better. Never mind. Well, it felt better. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a shot though. I'm gonna daily drive this at least two weeks before I write my review and then I'll either be switching to it finally Finally, something that could be an upgrade for me from my Note 9, or I'll just go back to the Note 9. That's it for now. Make sure you're subscribed.